While the era of the great man theories are long gone and largely proven fruitless in trying to theorise leadership, there is always a place in leadership for learning from exemplars. After all, transformational and authentic leaders guide us through their ability to inspire extraordinary effort. We use them as role models and look to them for clues about how we should become leaders ourselves. Often, the most enlightening examples of the power of effective leadership come through looking at contexts where leaders endure what Bennis described as crucible moments. Moments where leaders have to make decisions in unimaginable circumstances and where lives depend upon the outcome. In 1914, just as the cataclysm of World War I was getting underway, Ernest Shackleton was leading an expedition to be the first to cross Antarctica. Within days of getting to the ice pack, the expedition was met with disaster, as their ship, the Endurance, got stuck in the ice and was crushed beneath them. Shackleton and his 27-man crew were stuck on the ice floes for nearly two years with no means of communication with the outside world and no hope of being rescued. The story of what followed is held up as being one of the greatest examples of crisis leadership since despite catastrophic failure in an extreme environment with limited resources and the ever-present risk of death due to Shackleton's actions, everybody survived. More contemporary examples of crisis leadership include Jean Kranz's leadership during the Apollo 13 disaster and Mayor Rudy Giuliani following the attack on the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. Goldman, Boyatzis and McKee, when writing on emotional intelligence, noted that despite its negative inclinations, the command and control style can hold an important place in the emotionally intelligent leader's repertoire when used judiciously and only with extreme caution. It requires knowing when to be angry with the right person, in the right way, at the right time and for the right reason. Such jolts are required in extraordinary circumstances such as a crisis and when all else will fail to bring about what is needed. For example, Gene Kranz's now famous words, failure is not an option, were delivered in an unhesitating command tone to his NASA colleagues during the Apollo 13 incident and in direct response to a lack of creative thinking that was required to deal with the situation. His words jolted his team into action and a realisation that the old rules no longer applied and a greater purpose was being served in breaking them. Yet at no time did Krantz lose emotional control and once the message was clearly understood, he reverted to his usual transformational leadership style. Likewise, the story of the Shackleton expedition is one of a transformational leader interspersed in critical moments with using command and control to avert disaster or to bring his followers to a quick and decisive understanding of a bigger context. While a summary is no substitute for an immersion into the crucible experience of a leader, nonetheless it is worth recounting Morell and Caporell's summary of the key lessons of the Shackleton expedition. Shackleton's values derived from a liberal upbringing, which among other things saw a more democratic style of leadership as progressive and necessary for success compared with ideas of leadership in the late 19th century. He relied on these values as he gained expertise in naval matters and specific expertise in leading Antarctic expeditions. He reflected upon adverse occurrences on past expeditions upon which he had been a member and learned from their leaders what to do and particularly what not to do. In preparing for the expedition, he recruited a crew of experienced individuals and would only hire those whose values he could discern and whose unique talents he could identify as meeting the aims of the expedition. He took great care in recruiting his second-in-command as someone in whom he had complete trust and with whom he could reflect. He looked for optimism and cheerfulness in the people he recruited. He paid those who he recruited the best compensation for the time and provided them with the best equipment. Shackleton clearly communicated his values to his crew as he recruited them and again as soon as they were on board ship. He made careful observations about the crew as they began to work together and established order and routine so all of the crew knew where they stood. He broke down traditional hierarchies and was transparent and even-handed in all decisions with the crew and used informal gatherings to build morale and celebrate a sense of team. He persisted in celebrating even when things were at their worst. Shackleton led by example, allowing his technical expertise to show. He understood and accepted individual quirks and weaknesses and used informal one-on-one -on -one meetings to get to know each of his crew and to form a personal bond. Despite his position as captain, he was always willing to roll up his sleeves and to help others get their work done, 
and also used these opportunities to show them how they could reach their potential. Shackleton, through presence, expertise and communication, let everyone know that he had a clear vision and a plan at all times, and often in the face of rapidly changing situations and new setbacks. He always communicated and projected a sense of confidence in their success, regardless of each new setback. He inspired optimism in everyone. He put down dissent quickly, through command and control if necessary, and by keeping malcontents close to him. Nonetheless, he tried to create a clean slate about past mistakes and focus on the future. He worked tirelessly to keep spirits high. When situations required that he needed to divide up his men into smaller groups, he created teams that were balanced by talent and expertise. He made sure that no team felt less important than any other and ensured that no one was left behind. He remained visible and vigilant of his followers' interpersonal needs and shored up their weakest links. Shackleton balanced the day-to-day -day needs of survival with the big picture required to get them all home. He took responsibility for getting the whole job done and considered how each person was contributing to that aim. He used the resilience gained from past adversity to continue in the face of odds, almost insurmountable odds, and took big risks when these were required. We can see, even through this short narrative of Shackleton's expeditions, many of the transformational leadership behaviours that make leaders highly effective. In crisis situations, while the occasional use needs to be made of command and control styles of leadership, transformational leadership behaviours are actually required to be heightened and used more often in order to ensure follower success.